please, uh, Irene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, my, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm very honored to be in such a distinguished gathering. It is my first time at this level in the SIM, and I would wish to thank the OAS and the SIM for the invitation. Now, my ambassador is here, my ambassador to Washington, so I wouldn't wish any errors to go out into the marketplace because then, you know, I could get in trouble. <laughs> but I would wish to correct the statement. Like Patricia, I am an ex-candidate. I would have run for the constituency of St. Andrew as a political newcomer in 2008. I ran against a veteran, a 14-year veteran, a multi-millionaire, who would have held the seat, as I said, for 14, 15 years, and he beat me by 41 votes. No. So I am still in the political arena. I am now a senator, and I would have been a union leader as well. So I just wanted to correct that so that there is no uh, misinterpretation. Like Patricia, I had a situation where we saw that the women were the supporters of my campaign. We did an analysis of the statistics and 60% of the women who turned out, who were registered on the electoral list voted for me. So that tells you something about the balance in the election. Unlike some of my fellow panelists, I have, I'm optimistic also about the future of our women in power. I'm just disappointed today that I don't see more men because we're here preaching to the converted. We know already what the situation is. The men need to hear our message. They need to understand. We here know what we're speaking about. And we need to speak the truth to the power. And as much as we dislike and do not wish to accept it, the men still have the power. Now, in Barbados, as you know, it's a, t a very small island. And um, we're 260,000 people. Our island is 166 square miles. Everybody knows everybody else. And I do think that the biggest problem we have in people and women coming forward to serve is that they're afraid. And one of my panelists did mention that, that women are afraid. Our society is very small, as I said, and we practice a very British type politics, where the politics is very robust. It can sometimes be very lavatorial. It can be. So when you see a West Indian woman deciding to become involved in politics, she has to be a very brave woman because it is not a very easy environment. I myself had never spoken on a political platform before 2008, but I felt strongly enough about the lack of representation to be able to come forward and bear the brunt of that campaign. I also, as a woman, had to ask the permission of my family. Sometimes we forget we are still women, and we have our responsibilities at the home as well as on the national level. And I had to ask my boys permission. I have a 21-year-old now and an 18-year-old and my husband. I had to ask their permission. I see this belief. Yes, I, am. I have a 21-year-old and an 18-year-old. Somebody mentioned that the face of politics is changing and that they're seeing women who look more like their children and their grandchildren. That can be true sometimes. But the, the point I'm making is, is that we have to understand we have two roles to play in that we are the nurturers but we also are the leaders and sometimes when we become involved in politics some of us become surrogate men and we sit down and we take the status quo as it is and we forget the women's agenda but I tend to see that that is changing now. And if we have more women like the women we see here, who understand that the women's agenda has to be foremost, I think that our progress, especially in this area of the world, will be a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And I am seeing it happening. We are not happy that the mind, it is still, as we said, it's three leaders in, in, in Latin America, three female leaders, and you hear the international media saying great progress is being made. But as Patricia said, it happens in steps. It cannot happen overnight. When I was growing up, I was hearing about the burning of brass, 
Jazz. I was reading about Gloria Steinem. It was a different evolution. We are now at a different stage in our development, and we have to understand that. But we are, I sincerely believe, getting somewhere. I did have notes to read, but um, I, I think that I will have to forego that because we do have limited time. But there is one thing I would like us all to remember. As women in power, we owe it to our fellow women and our, our prospective politicians to nurture them. We do not have a system in my country or in the region of mentoring where older political and women, or women in politics longer than us, can mentor us so that we no longer are afraid of the environment because there's always that fear. But if we have women who can mentor us and let us understand what it is to be a female politician. I am sure that more women will come forward because we are saying that we want the 30%, the, min the critical mass, but we're not going to get that unless women come forward to offer themselves to serve. When we have that occurring, then we can see the critical mass being met. And it should not only be that we elect women because they are women, they must be women of worth. And I, I do believe that our younger women are seeing women of worth, and at some point we may see a female leading the OAS, at some point we will see a woman heading the United Nations, at some point we will see a woman heading the United States of America as president. We will see it happening. It may not be in our lifetime, but I am optimistic.